Well, after the Manistique paper mill closed in 2015, it was bought and reopened just a few months ago. So this morning, Ansley Watson is there for the latest for the future of the mill. Good morning, Ansley. Good morning, Vicki. And before I get started, I gotta show you my little friend here. So we pan over. This is what uh, John and I ran into this morning. Creep me out, right? Oh, it was giving me the heebie-jeebies. So anyway. Yes, we're outside UP Paper LLC, which we might know that as a future mark paper where they closed down in 2015, but now UP Paper reopened in June. They have a little over 70 employees working right now. They hope to increase that later as the year goes on. This morning, I got a little tour. So much cool stuff inside. Huge machinery. We're going to go inside, explore, just see what the future of the mill looks like and see how this has impacted the community. So stay with us. Reporting live in Manistique, Ansley Watson, TV6 News. All right, and don't be afraid. That is just a little tiny spider there. So be firm and don't freak out. <laughs> it's <right>. huge. <laughs> it's tiny. As we can remember, that was a tiny spider. I am. <laughs> I don't like spiders of any type, I so it, I so. say that. <laughs> I missed it, so I, I can't yeah. weigh in on so, this one. Sam's in de deniability. <laughs> he saw it, folks. He saw it. He's just like, I don't know what you're talking about. That was just a piece of dirt on there. I'm, yeah, it was a spider. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> yeah. True, yeah. especially for spiders. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, we don't want to UP be... Paper LLC breathing new life into the former paper mill in Manistique. Ansley Watson is there this morning telling us about the changes and the hope for the future that they have. Good morning, Ansley. Good morning, Vicki. If you think about those brown paper bags that you would receive from McDonald's or Hardee's, that's the type of paper that's being made here in this mill, just in bulk size. To talk more about that this morning is Laura Sandberg, and he is the president and CEO here. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. So this mill just reopened in June. How's it been going so far? Got a couple of months under the belt. It's going really good. We have uh, been producing for the market and the market is uh, starting to accept our product and the paper machine has been running really, really great. Yeah. As we can hear behind us, there's large machinery behind us. What is this? Kind of tell me the process of, it's all recycled paper that you use here. Yeah, we're buying recycled paper from um, Green Bay or in the, uh, in, the, in the valley. We bring it up here, we clean it up and we then spray to put the, uh, the fibers on a wire and in the head box as you can see up there it's about 99% uh, water then we have to take out the water to uh, in different steps from the beginning here is the forming section and then we have the uh, press section and we have the dryers further down as we go down it is incredible this machinery machinery you said a lot of this is original and it still works it still works, but uh, the most important is the head box, which is uh, doing the forming, is uh, brand new, state of the art. And the press section here is uh, not that old either. The dryer section maybe is a little bit older, but it's the same if it's, it looks the same if it's a brand new plant or an older. But uh, this plant was, uh, I think the paper machine was installed in the early 70s. Really? Uh, the dryer in. And it's still working fairly well, or have you had to do a lot of maintenance? We have been cleaning up. We have done lots of maintenance to get it up to snuff, and uh, it's uh, but it's running really good. The paper machine is very, very fast. It's running about uh, 40 feet a minute, and it's uh, say 50 miles per hour. So it's a really fast machine, even though it's old. And it's a perfect site to produce this uh, type of paper bags. Uh, it's uh, we don't need to have any trim, which we have to waste. So it's a perfect site for paper bags production. Describe the process of, obviously the paper is made here in bulk, but then sent to another company where they actually put it into the bag form, where they send it to other places. Yes, we produce the paper in different uh, basis weights, and then we send it to a converter. The converter can be down in Green Bay, could be in Chicago, Detroit, wherever, and they convert it to a paper, uh, a paper bag which they also print on and glue it together and print on. And then it's sent to stores where we're getting, getting to use it. Could be for wine bottles, it could be for uh, uh, fast food and restaurants like McDonald's and Burger King and people like that. So paper, if we went to a McDonald's in Oregon, that paper was potentially made here in the UP? It could be in the future made here. Uh, our competitors right now is on the west coast and the east coast, but we're going to focus on the middle, in, in the middle of U.S. Uh, so that's where we think we have a niche. And of course, it's lots of freight involved in this, freight in of waste paper, freight out, 
So it's very important that you be close to the market. And we think we have a golden opportunity to carve in a niche in here in the middle, Midwest. Definitely. Well, stay with us. We'll talk more about this when we come back. Okay. Reporting live in Manistique, Ansley Watson, TV6 News. All right. Thank you very much, Ansley. That is a really cool facility there. And it's great to see that they breathed it back into life. Yeah. Like we said, it closed last year, and that was a hard hit for Manistique. Yeah, so. it looks like some good news and a step in the right direction. That's right. right. And speaking of a step in the right Welcome direction. Welcome back. Well, this morning we've been talking and taking a look at the future of UP Paper since it reopened in June in Manistique. Ansley Watson is in Manistique this morning, giving us an in-depth behind-the-scenes look at the mill. Good morning, Ansley. Good morning, Sam. You can see behind us, look at this machinery. Some of this is original from the old, old mill, and some of it is newer with the mill. Joining me this morning is Lars Danberg, and you are the president here. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. So we were talking about the, kind of the process of what the mill does to make paper. We bring in waste paper from uh, in the valley, down in Green Bay, Appleton, or down to Chicago. We bring in waste paper, we clean it up, make a slurry of it, and then we pump it out on the head box over there. We spray that head uh, slurry on a on a wire. That's there. We have 99% uh, water and 1% fiber, and then we take out the water through the process. That we we drain it out uh, with vacuum and we have press it out. And then we go over the drier sections. And when it comes up here, it's about 5% moisture, 5 to 6% moisture, and the rest is fiber. And from there, which as you can see, we're not running right now, but we have maintenance shot. But then we make a big, big roll, bring it over to the rewinder. And how many tons did you say that was? The, the big roll can be up to 10, 15 tons. Wow. And then we br bring it over to the rewinder. And there we have knives, where we cut it up to the size that uh, our customers need. And we put it on a core. Uh, you can see the core in front of us here. And uh, then we, we wrap it up in the wrapping line here, or uh, put in uh, wrapping paper, and we glue it together, send it out in the warehouse and on trucks down to wherever we're selling it to. Yeah, if we look over to the side here, these big rolls, those are completed rolls, correct? Those Go, are ready to ship out. Those are completed rolls, yes. And where would those head out to? It could be, uh, as I'm saying, we're trying to be in the Midwest. And so it could be Detroit, it could be Toronto, it could be, uh, could be down in Appleton, Green Bay. Uh, down to Kentucky, but we don't want to go east and west. Uh, however, we have some customers also in the, on the east side. As we can see, men are showing up to work mm. this morning. What kind of impact has this made on the community here, reopening this mill? This is huge. Uh, this is one of the biggest industry in, in Manistique, and uh, we, we are going to go up to 90 people, which means that at least three times more people are going to be involved. If it's uh, gas stations, if it's trucking, if it's uh, uh, restaurants, and, and it's going to impact the whole, not only in Manistique, but the whole way down to, to uh, Escanaba and Menominee and Appleton. So it's, it's a big, big thing for the community, absolutely. There's a lot of people involved in kind of making this happen. What would you like to say about that? Well, the, uh, I've been involved with starting up uh, plants all over the world. Uh, been in Europe, in Canada, in, in Brazil, and uh, I have never seen a group like this. They are hardworking, no complaints, just work, 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 and they want to make this go. And uh, when we, in April, when we started to hire the people, uh, they showed up in the morning, didn't even ask how much they're going to be get paid. They just asked where are we going to start to work, and it's unbelievable. It's. Uh, I'm so happy and proud about them. What do you hope for the future for this mill? Well, I hope that we're going to uh, produce uh, and produce a lot and, uh, to good quality. And if you do that, we of course, we, and we, we know that we can produce the quality. And of course, then we hope to make money and pay taxes in town and uh, keep on doing this for uh, 20, 30 years forward. Uh, and of course, upgrade the mill slowly and steadily and put in new equipment as uh, equipment improves. So that's the intention. Well, Lars, thank you so much for showing us around, giving you more in-depth detail about what this mill is all about. So thank thank you. you. Reporting live in Manistique, Ansley Watson, and we'll be back with more of your TV6 Morning News after the break.